Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Political Puja celebration. Welcome to those who have already joined us via Zoom. The program this morning, we will have a talk by Siroko Sen. That will be followed by some devotional songs led by Mother Sen and group. And then we'll have a talk by Raju Energy. Then you'll be invited to participate in a flower offering ceremony to have a daughter. So I now request Sir Edward Sainte to give her talk. Thank you. We celebrate Durga Puja today. My Bhakti Purna Pranam to Thakur Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother Sri Sri Sharada Devi and Swamiji. My Pranam and Namaskar to the Matajis. Greetings and Namaskar. Greetings and Namaskar to all of you on this very auspicious day of Durga Puja. Durga Puja is an annual Hindu festival originating from Indian subcontinent. We also call Durga Puja as Sharudotsav or um, uh, Durgotsav. Durga Puja is particularly significant in cultural event in the Bengali society. And being a Bengali, it's, it's particularly very close to my heart too. It doesn't matter which part of the world a Bengali resides in. At the moment, the month of Ashwin, September, October, seeps in. The excitement about welcoming Madhuga follows. However, in the states of Odisha, Tripura, and lots of others, whole India now, all the states, they also celebrate with great enthusiasm, and it's called Navaratri. Navaratri literally means nine nights, but it's counted from the day after the new moon, which is Amavasya. But for Bengalis, the, on the new moon day, we call it as Mahalaya, and it's a moment of deep emotional and spiritual connection. It's a celebration of heritage. Mahala is a happy occasion because while there are many stories and folklore associated with the day, people believe that on this day, Goddess Durga begins her week-long journey with her children, Ganesha, Kartika, Lakshmi and Sharishwati on a vehicle of her own choice. From Kailash, where she resides with her husband, Lord Shiva, to her maternal home on earth. Ma Durga's vehicle could be a palanquin or a boat, an elephant or a horse. Mahala is celebrated generally seven days before the Durga Puja starts. And every Bengali household on this day will wake up even before the sun to listen on the All India Radio, the songs and slokas from Chandipad called Mahisha Sudamardini. The most famous of the songs is Jago Tumi Jago, meaning awaken, O Goddess. At the dawn of the Mahala, the artisans bring the Durga idols to a completion by drawing the eyes of the idol. This is known as Chokhudan. Navaratri worships Durga, but it's a nine-day celebration of the victory of Rama over Ravana. On the other hand, Durga Puja is the victory of Ma Durga um, over the buffalo demon Mahishasura. 
which is celebrated the last five days of the Navaratri. The Durga Puja ceremonial worship of Mother Goddess is important festival of India. The Puja celebrated with great enthusiasm and grandeur. Apart from being a religious festival for the Hindus, it's also an occasion of reunion, rejuvenation, and celebration of the traditional culture and customs. While the ritual entails 10 days of feast, fast, and worship, the last four days, Saptami, that's the seventh day, Ashtami, the eighth day, Navami, the ninth day, and Dashami today, the tenth day, are celebrated with much gaiety and grandeur in India and abroad, especially in Bengal, where the Tenam goddess is riding on the line, is worshipped with great passion and devotion. It's also a festival which is a, a triumph of good over bad. I will read a little poem that I found to share with you. Uh, it's written by someone called Srinja Chakravarti. The temple priest has rung his bell. A cloud of smoke from candles and lamps hallows the goddess glowing bright. This beat of drums both maddens and dulls. The incense burns, so he did the mask. Our senses flounder in the flood. This endless chant of sacred words soon drugs our lips and stunts our minds. The goddess always staring down, her painted pupil cut through smoke and read the sacred thoughts we think. We somehow feel this within our hearts. To mother we know, we bow, we pray. Her form is not just the image of play. The word Durga derived from Sanskrit word Durg, meaning a fort or a protective fortress. Durga is also known as Durga Tinashini, meaning the one who eliminates suffering. Goddess Durga protects the human race from ego, hatred, prejudice, selfishness, jealousy, etc. She is the very essence of creation, preservation, and annihilation. It is believed that Durga was born from the collective energies of Trinity of Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwar to slay the demon Maheshasura, who was a great pain to the gods and to the living beings. Almost all Vedic scriptures mention the glories of Durga sung by sages, saints, and devotees. She has been immensely praised in the Devi Mahatmaya or Saptasati. Durga Saptasati is one of the ancient Vedic scriptures that describe Durga as the supreme power and the creative energy of the Supreme Absolute. Durga Saptasati is also known as Devi Mahatmaya, which is a section of the Markandeya Purana, one of the most important Vedic texts of Shaktism, the goddess, the feminine side of the Hinduism. The text contains Sapta Sata, Sapta meaning seven, Sata is 100. So 700 slokas in 13 chapters. Um, and composition is known as Durga Shakta Shakti. Chat Chandipat is dedicated to Ma Chandi, who is, the who is one of the divine forms of Ma Durga. And it's believed that she, Ma Chandi, is the preserver of the mankind. Shat Chandipat is a very powerful and unique ritual having Saptasati mantras. The ritualistic reading of du Durga Saptasati is a part of Navaratri and Durga Puja celebrations in the honor of Goddess Durga. Durga Puja is celebrated every year in the Hindu month of Ashwin, which is September, October, and celebrates Prince Rama's 
invocation of the goddess before going to war with the demon. Durga Puja is generally celebrated in springtime. So this puja is also known as Akal Bodhan. Akal means out of season and Bodhan is worship. Thus goes the story of Lord Rama who first worshipped Mah Mahishasura Maddini or the slayer of the buffalo demon by offering 108 lotuses and lighting 108 lamps at this time of the year. The festival reveres and pays homage to the goddess and is also celebrated for the victory of the goddess Durga over the demon, buffalo demon Mahishasura. It's also an occasion of reunion, rejuvenation and celebration of traditional culture and customs. The festival culti culminates on the 10th day, the Shera, which is also known as Vijayadashuni by some of us, marking the end of the celebration. And today is the Dashera. I will read a few lines from another poem written by Twisha Ray. Mother, as you come, make us feel to erase evil and selfishness to kill. Bless us to worship you with devotion and care and fill us family love so we can share. The elaborate statue and pandals dazzle our eyes. The invocation of the goddess is a beautiful sight. Goddess Durga comes visiting with her children. The sight makes people bow their head in reverence. We find our beloved goddess among us. The chanting and worshiping mesmerizes onlookers. Everyone decks themselves in new clothes. The fervor and the excitement are beyond control. The beat of the drums can make our feet dance. The cheerful days just rushes past. When the day of leaving for, for the goddess draws near, our hearts are filled with unshed tears. In Bishnupur, West Bengal, Durga Puja holds an unique place. Uh, the district boasts that uh, the Rajbari Durga Puja, also known as Mrinmoy Mai Puja, dates back to 994 AD. The, but the first recorded history of grand worship of Goddess Durga is said to have been celebrated in the late 1500s. Folklore say that the landlords or the zamindas of uh, the, the Dinajpur and Malda districts, or, or an, another source says the Raja Kangshan Narayan of the Herpur or Bhavanendra Majumdar of Nadia organized the first Sharadiya Durga Puja in 1606. Sharadiya is the, uh, what we call, this autumn, 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 the Sharadiya is the autumn Durga Puja. The origin of Barovari Puja, what is going on now, community puja can be credited to the 12 friends of Bhuktipara Hubli, West Bengal, who collect, collaborated and collected contributions from the local residents to conduct the very first community puja called the Baro Yari. Baro means 12 and Yari is Pal. The Baro in 1790, the Baruwari Puja was brought to Kolkata in the 1832 by Raja Harinath of Kashim Bazar, who performed the Durga Puja at his ancestral home, Mushidabad from 1824 to 1831. The Baruwari Puja gave way to the Sarvajani or Community Puja in 1910. When the first truly community puja in Bagh Bazar, Kolkata, with full public contribution, public collaboration and participation started. Now the dominant mode of Bengali Durga Puja is the public version. The British during their stay in India also participated in the Durga Puja 
The research papers also shows that the high level of British officials regularly attended Durga Puja, organized by the influential Bengalis, and the British soldiers actually participated the pujas, had prasad, and even saluted the deity. But the most amazing act was the worship performed by East India Company itself for a few years. The traditional icon of the goddess we worship, the Durga Puja, in the Durga Puja, it was in the line with the iconography of this described in the scriptures. In Durga, the gods bestowed their powers to co-create a beautiful goddess with 10 arm, arms, each carrying their most lethal weapons. The image of Durga also features her four children, Ganesha, Kartikya, Saraswati, and Lakshmi. A traditional clay image of Durga or Pratima made of clay with five gods and the goddesses under one structure is called Ek Chala. Ek means one and Chala is cover. The huge temporary canopies held by framework of bamboos and draped with colorful fabric that house the icons is called pandas. Durga Puja is an extravagant affair in Kolkata, bringing together the affluent religious as well as cultural history. It's the true time when Kolkata brightens up with lively colors and become a perfect place to visit. During this time, people wearing traditional clothes, lively bazaars with more than 1,000 colorful pandals revealing various forms of goddess Durga. The modern pandals are innovative, artistic, elaborate, and decorative at the same time of the offering the visual spectacle of the numerous visitors who gave pandal hopping for the four days of Durga Puja. Kolkata Durga Puja pandals attracts people from all over the world and make Durga Puja one of the greatest events. Swamiji um, performed the first Durga Puja in Belulmat in 1901. And she, he did the puja under the name of Sri Holy Mother Sharda Devi it, in Belurma. And Mat Mother Holy Mother was present at that Durga Puja herself. At the invitation of Shamiji, his own mother also attended the puja there. And Swamiji sang many devotional songs Quite a few of them were sung by Thakur Sri Ramakrishna. I will end with a little reading from the gospel that I found, and I thought I should share it with all of you, that Thakur also took part in the Durga Pujas. It says in the chapter one uh, of the gospel of Thakur Sri Ramakrishna, today is Navami Puja, Wednesday, 10th of October, 1883. Our Navami was yesterday. Adhar is celebrating the Durga Puja festival at his house and has invited Thakur to it. Sri Ramakrishna is standing in the worship hall watching the Arati of Sri Durga. Sri Ramakrishna has come with devotees including Balaram's father and Sharada Babu, a retired school inspector and a friend of Adhar. Adhar was, has invited his friend, neighbors and relatives for the occasion. Quite a number of them have come. Thakur Sri Ramakrishna stands in ecstasy after watching the evening arati. Absorbed, he sings to the Divine Mother Thakur sings a hymn to praise the mother of the universe for the welfare of all. 
he sings, O oh Mother, O oh Redeemer, take me across quickly this time. I'm dying in fear of the God of death. O oh Mother of the Universe, Preserver and Enchantress of the world and its begator, you took birth from Ashoda's womb, emerging as the Lord's divine sport. In Vrindavan as Radha, you sported and enjoyed yourself with Krishna, the beloved of Raja. Full of sweetness, you took delight and participated in the dance of divine sport. You are Shiva's consort. You are the mother. You are the heartthrob of Govinda. You dwell in the heart of and bestow salvation. You are eternal. You are Ishani, ever full of bliss. You assume all forms. You have attributes. And yet you are attributeless. You are ever the beloved of Shiva, who can fathom your greatness. She will be there. Thank you, my cousin. Thanks very much for that talk, Sureka. She's a very dear friend of ours. She was living in Adelaide and used to host talks by Jayakana Mataji there and we had a beautiful lunch with her too. Now she's moved to Sydney. So Adelaide's loss in our game. <laughs> uh, we will now have some live music with Madhu Sen and friends. So we'll need to do a little bit of setting up there with us. Pranam Mataji and Namaskar to all devotees and the audience. Today is the last day of Durga Puja and in Bengali we say Dashami. So on this day, auspicious day, we are trying to sing some devotional song on Ma Durga before her return to Kailash. But unfortunately some of the good singers are very sick today. They are born they have throat problem or fever. So we three are trying to best of our. So hope you will enjoy our music. Thank you.
আজি সঙ্গে সঙ্গে মঙ্গল গা জননী দারে আজি সঙ্গে সঙ্গে মঙ্গল গা জননী এসেছে দারে সপ্ত সিংহ কল্লোল সপ্ত সিংহ কল্লোল রোল বেজেছে সপ্ত তারে ও গো জননী এসেছে দারে আজ সঙ্গে সঙ্গে মঙ্গল গাও জননী এসেছে দারে সুর সপ্ত তুলেছে তা সপ্ত ঋষির সুর সপ্ত তুলেছে তা সপ্ত ঋষি গুন্দি ঘোষে সপ্ত গ্রহের রাজ সপ্ত সুরে নগুয়ানেছে দারে আজ সঙ্গে সঙ্গে মঙ্গন গাও জননী এসেছে দারে সাত রাঙা রবি রাম ধনু হাতে বরণের বন হানে সপ্ত কোটি সুসন্তান বিজয় মাল সাত রাঙা রবি রাম ধনু হাতে বরণের বান হানে সপ্ত কোটি সুসন্তান বিজয় মাল এলো সপ্ত তীর্থ একই সপে লোকে তারে ও গো জননী এসেছে দারে আজ সঙ্গে সঙ্গে মন গাও ঠগ 
ಖೋಲೋ ಕೋಟಿ ರೋದ
Prof and Devarati Madhuparna and I don't know your name. Hmm? Deepti. Tripti. Tripti. Thank you so much for the beautiful song. Thank you. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Chetani Tithiyate Namastasye 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 Namo Namaha. Salutations again and again to the Devi who abides in all beings as consciousness. In Hinduism, personal God, the worship of Saguna Brahman, personal God, are, main, are three streams. We have the worship of Shiva Shaivaism, worship of Vishnu, Krishna, all come together as Vaishnavism, and worship of Divine Mother Shakta. So they are known, uh, these three deities are known by different names in different parts of India, like Vishnu, we have got Narayana, Jagannath, Vithal, Panduranga, Venkatesha, so many names are there. And Shiva, Vishwanath, Ongarnath, Rameshwar, Nilakant, Mahashwar, so Maheshwar, and Divine Mother, Amba, Ambika, Uma, Bhavani, Durga, Chamundeshwari, Kanyakumari, Kalika. And they have got their own separate um, sacred texts also. Like Shiva, there's Shaiva Agamas. Vishnu, for Vishnu we have got Ramayana, Mahabharata, Srimad Bhagavatam. And for Divine Mother, there is the Tantras, then Devi Bhagavatam, and I should say the most important one is Devi Mahatmyam or Durga Saptasati or Chandi. The, the, the three names belong to the same book. They are called by different three, different three names. <coughs> As we already heard from Mr. Uh, Chandi or Devi Mahatmi is part of Markandeya Purana. Now, we all know the background of Bhagavad Gita is the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Arjuna refused to fight and then Shri Krishna gave the teachings of Bhagavad Gita encouraging him to fight. Fight means do his duty. Not, not that Krishna is encouraging in endorsing battle and war. No, he is just asking Arjuna to do his duty. And fighting against the injustice was his Arjuna's duty, so he has asked, encouraging him to do the duty. Chandi, if you look, or Devi Mahadmyam, is full of fight. And again, fighting, killing. If you read the read the book, how can you, a scripture, you say it's a scripture, full of fighting and killing, left and right. And who is the warrior? It's a woman. And now this this age of um, misogyny and gender bias, it sounds very good. It's very nice to see a warrior woman. But the description of her is <clears throat> gen her face is gently smiling, pure, resembling the full moon's orb, beautiful like the splendor of gold. What a description. And that means really very gentle, beautiful woman. And in this one of the episodes, there are different episodes are there in the book. In one episode, the two ministers of the king, the two ministers, Chanda and Munda, they are the servant ministers of uh, the king, uh, Shumbha. They saw this lady and rushed to the king to say, O oh king, a most beautiful woman dwells in the Himalayan region. Such supreme beauty was never seen by anyone anywhere. So beautiful she is. So she is very gentle, extremely beautiful. These descriptions show a gentle, young, caring person. 
But if you look at the way she fights, what a warrior she is. <clears throat> In the course of the fight, the different uh, female deities were, were fighting along with her. And the king, Shumbha, challenged her. Oh, you, are, you don't boast to be very brave because you are using the others. You are help, taking the help of others. Then at once she says, she withdraws all those powers into herself. And she says, Ekai vaham jagat yatra dutiya kama mapara. I am all alone in this world here. What other is there besides me? This is power of supreme reality. Em she is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses. Divine Mother is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses, all in, in loading in one. When we worship Holy Mother, when we have the formal fire ceremony, we the mantra we uh, utter is Sarva Deva Devi Sarupanye. Shri Sharada Devi Swaha or Nama Nisei. That is, you are the Holy Mother, Shri Sharada Devi is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses. Divine Mother, whatever name you call, is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses. <clears throat> and Swami, Swami Vivekananda used to refer to Holy Mother as the living Durga. So Durga is the embodiment of all gods and goddesses. So, not that we have got a hundred gods and gods or goddesses. When I said earlier, Vishiva, Vishnu has got so many names, Shiva has got so many names, Divine Mother has got so, so many names. So, you have got so many gods. No. These are all different aspects, different names. A person can be called, say, <coughs> say, Surekha. She will talk. She, to her children, she is a mother. To us, she's a devotee. To her other relatives, different relations are there. But the person is only one. God is only one we call by different names. And the Divine Mother is the embodiment of all these gods and goddesses. She is a monotheistic deity. There's no duality of any kind. And this Divine Mother contains everything within herself. Not just all other deities, but the entire manifested universe is contained within her. <clears throat> and again, she dwells in all. There is, she dwells in every being, everything. There is one hymn which says, Ya Devi Sarva Pudeshu Chaitanya that one I just chanted. You, she dwells in you as in every being as consciousness. Ya Devi Sarva Pudeshu Buddhi Rupana Samstita. The Divine Mother who dwells in all beings as intelligence goes on to saying everything power, uh, peace, faith. Even um, then, in all beings as mother, in all beings as error. So there is no difference. Everything good and bad, everything is in mother. Everything is in her. There is no separateness. And if you think that you can escape from mother, no, there is no way. Because she is in you. Wherever you go, you are taking her with you. You you don't, you whether you realize or not, she is in you. Can you say that you don't have intelligence? Can you say you don't, don't have consciousness? Nobody can say, I'm, I'm, I don't have consciousness or I don't have intelligence. She is in you as consciousness, as intelligence, as power, as uh, peace, as faith. So Divine Mother is in all of us. Whether we like it or not, she is there with you. We cannot go away from her. You say, yeah, I, don't want, I don't believe in God. I don't like all these things. No escape. She is in you. <clears throat> and this idea of mother is catching the attention of more and more people now. 
um, uh, one devotee told me some time back that when she went to one of the Ramakrishna mission, um, they said she was uh, trying to buy some books and she, the the person there in that the selling the or oh, in charge of the bookstalls was saying there is a greater number of books sold on Holy Mother than Sri Ramakrishna and Swamiji. So mother's influence is increasing more and more. This idea of mother is catching the attention of more people. <clears throat> One American devotee, she writes, as the constrictions of paternalism break down and are replaced by bewilderments of choice and lack of structure, the con concept of a mother deity who all alone creates and sustains begins to feel right. Young people are feeling they can understand such a deity and such a deity can understand them. If you talk to a young person, one of the complaints is, you don't understand me. We say something, then the first answer is, you don't understand me. But here, young people feel that she can understand us. That mother can understand us. So we feel close to us. There is a generation gap there. It's all gone. As far as when mother comes, she understands everybody. <clears throat> and when she fought, what a great fighter she was. She <clears throat> proved herself to be an equal to all these great demons, all these wicked things. She was fighting with bow and arrow, sword and shield, mace, even with fist. And on the ground, up in the air, without any support, meeting every tactics of the, uh, the demons. How We heard how the buffalo demon was fighting with her and the demon was changing the forms that he had, he had the power to change from human form to buffalo, to lion, to elephant, whatever form we take, she is there to fight with that. And if you look at, if you read that description of her fighting, it seems like they were one of these super women, women that we in the um, the or of the um, computer games, like that. She is doing everything, and so it's very happy when young people feel very comfortable with such a strong fighter who can fight for you. <clears throat> so who is this Devi? Or what is her nature? What's her form? From where did she come from? The, the sage answers, Nityeva sa jagan murti staya sarvam idam tatam. She is eternal, embodied as the universe. By her, all this is pervaded. See, she is eternal, embodied as the universe. By her, this whole universe is pervaded. Nevertheless, she in, incarnates in manifold ways. This is exactly the words that Sri Krishna uses in the Bhagavad Gita. She, he says, Ajobisan Avayatma. Bhutanam Isharopisat. Pragritim Swamathishthaya Sambhavami Atma Maya. I am eternal, unborn. Yet in taking the help of my Pragriti, I am born again and again. <coughs> so Ch Ch Chandi says, she creates, the, the sage is answering, she creates the entire universe, both moving and unmoving. And when propitious, she becomes the boon giver to human beings for their final liberation. When she is pleased with you, she will give you the boon for final liberation. And when does she take the form? Again, to go back to um, what Krishna said, he says, Paritranaya sadhuvina vinayashaya dushkritam dharma samstapanathaya sambhavami yuga yuga to protect the virtues and destroy the evildoers. I am born again and again. 
Mother says same, same thing in Chandi. Whenever trouble arises due to the advent of wicked people, I shall incarnate and destroy the enemies. Wherever there is a need, God takes a human form. <laughs> so, and different forms. Uh, depending upon the need of the time, she takes different forms. Often, Divine Mother is described or referred to as Mahamaya, the great delusion. There are also other names like Yoga Maya, Vishnu Maya. The great delusion, not just ordinary delusion, great delusion. She deludes even the wise seekers after truth. How does she delude? By clouding their intellect. By creating attachment. Attachment is attachment to different things. She creates attachment and thus clouds their intellect and deludes them. Even the wise seekers after truth are deluded. Then what to speak of, of ordinary mortals like us? It's no wonder we are all deluded. We think this is all in all. This is the life that we are leading. We are all under delusion. We are deluded by the, the that great enchantress, Divine Mother. So, and she has kept it deluded to keep the world process going on. She wants the creation to continue. Sri Ramakrishna says, <clears throat> in the game of hide and seek, the children play the game of hide and seek. There is one person plays as the granny and the others run around. If everybody touches the granny in the beginning of the game itself, game comes to an end. She doesn't like that. She wants the game to continue. She doesn't want the, the others to come and touch her. The same way, Divine Mother wants the world process to go on. So she has kept us deluded. <clears throat> so what are we to do with that? How to get out of the delusion? We pray to her. We see these sages like Narada praying. The only prayer they have is, please be gracious not to delude me by your world bewitching Maya. Your world bewitching Maya is bewitches everybody. Please don't delude me by that. <clears throat> Sri Krishna says in the Gita, Devi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratiya. <clears throat> this Maya of mine, constituted of the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, is very difficult to cross off. He says, he doesn't say impossible, he says very difficult to cross off. So that means there is a means. And what's the means? Those who devote themselves to me alone cross over this illusion. So we have to devote ourselves to God. As I quoted from the Chandi earlier, she grants emancipation to those who seek, seek that emancipation, surrendering themselves to her. We surrender to God. We seek God's grace. Then that's the only way to cross over this delusion, to get rid of this delusion power. <clears throat> Sri Ramakrishna says in his uh, very usual homely way, as long as a child is engaged in play with his toys, the mother is busy with her household work, cooking and other activities. But when the child is tired of the play and throws the toys away and cries, then mother will try to give another toy and try to keep the child pacified. But if it throws every, everything and cries at the top of the voice, then what does the mother do? Mother, Sri Ramakrishna says the mother takes the um, rice pot off the hearth and runs to the child, takes it on the lap and comfort, consoles it, comforts it. So the Divine Mother has given us so many toys. There is name, fame, power, family, wealth, relatives. All these are toys for us. So we are very happy with playing with all these toys. But sometimes one of the toys break, we get a blow, and we cry and call on mother. Mother, mother, she'll give you another toy. 
and we are happy to play with that again. As long as we are happy to play with, she doesn't care. You play, yeah, that's fine. You are happy with the, your toys, you play. You don't want me. You want to be happy with the toys. <clears throat> but if anybody rejects these toys and weeps for her earnestly, then she will. Sri Ramakrishna showed us how we should weep for her, to have her vision. You, if you read the life of Sri Ramakrishna, you can see. He prayed to her day after day, month after month, for a long time. With great earnestness. And even at the end of each day, towards the sunset, he, will, he, will, he used to cry. Mother, another day has gone. And I haven't seen your face. You haven't given me the vision. Your vision. And, <clears throat> and at last, he got so desperate that he was about to put an end to his life. Cut, to kill himself, taking the, uh, so, took the sword from mother's shrine. That time he had the vision of, vision of mother. So that is the intensity you need to have vision of mother. Sri Ramakrishna says, when somebody, one of the devotees asks, how can we have the vision of God? Sri Ramakrishna asks, can you weep for God? People shed jug full of tears for wife and children. Who weeps for God? Cry to him with a real cry. Then God will come. <clears throat> you know, every mother knows that if a child cries, they cannot, and cries and demands something, no mother can say no. Uh, really weeping for the child weeps, whatever be the, the demand, the mother will give it. If that is the case with ordinary mothers, mortal mothers, what about divine mother? If you really cry for, to her, asking for her, calling on her, she will come, she will give us whatever we ask for. But we have to make sure we ask for the right thing, not for another toy which will break after some time. We ask for mother. Then we will get real bliss. <clears throat> Chandi describes, the, the book describes her as para prakriti, the supreme creatrix. It is she who has created even the gods, the trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, are made to assume a body by her power. For what? To discharge their duties. She has, and if because of her power, they are able to discharge their duties. Without her, they are helpless. He say, one of the things in here, in Hinduism, a speciality, if you are following the Divine Mother, all the books on Divine Mother will say she is the most powerful. She is the, um, from her, the whole creation has come into existence. She sustains the creation and absorbs the creation back. If you look at uh, any scriptures, books divine, about uh, Vishnu, Vishnu, everything comes from Vishnu. Vishnu sustains the universe. It absorbs back into, the, into him. Shiva, Everything comes from Shiva, sustains by Shiva, absorbed back by Shiva. And he, Shiva is a supreme being. Vishnu is a supreme being. Why, why is this? How can they, everybody be supreme? The idea is to instill devotion into that particular devotees. You are a follower of Vishnu. You want to say, I'll tell you Vishnu is a, um, a greatest being. So you, your devotion to Vishnu will increase. You, you are a follower of Vish, uh, Shiva. Say Shiva is the greatest being. Your devotion to Shiva is increased. Divine Mother is the, you are a follower of Divine Mother. Mother is the greatest um, being, entity. Your devotion to Mother increases. Not that it is not fanaticism, but there are people, fanatics, who think that others are wrong. That's fanaticism. But saying that yours is the greatest 
no harm. That, that's what we call ishta nishta. Devotion to your chosen deity. <clears throat> so it, it says, it is Chandi, because it is my book on Divine Mother says, all these gods get their power from Divine Mother. Without her power, they won't be able to do their duties. Like Brahma is the creator. He won't be able to create because of if, if her power is not there. And Sankaracharya, whom we usually refer to as the greatest Advaitin, you know, Sankaracharya has got another side, is a great devotee. But he, he is not the fanatic Advaitin who denies everything else. He is a great devotee because, as Sri Ramakrishna says, once you reach there, the top, you see that everything leads to the same place. So he has written so many hymns, soul steering hymns to gods, personal gods, like um, um, Shiva, Vishnu, Divine Mother. There was one hymn uh, called Saundari Lahari. In that, Shankaracharya says, Shiva Shakya Yukto Edi Bhavadi Kinchit Prabhavidam Nache Devam Devo Nakhalu Kishala Spandit Mapit. If Shiva is united with Shakti, he becomes capable to project this universe. If Shiva is united with Shakti, he becomes capable to project the universe. We say, when we say creation, it's not creation of creating out of something out of nothing. No, it's just a projecting. Because we projecting, sustaining, and withdrawing. Again, projecting. That if she is united with Shakti, she can do that. If not, he is not capable of even moving his limbs. If the power of Divine Mother is not there, Shiva is not able to move even his limbs. That's how Sangaracharya is describing. And he had a personal experience with that. In the early days when Sangara was following, um, establishing, getting established in Advaita, he, does not, he did not believe in Shakti the power of Divine Mother. He was in Banaris, Kashi, and since he is a teacher, he is going, he is to be a world teacher, he should not have narrow limited ideas. That should be removed. So Mother herself uh, played a trick or a drama, made up a drama to teach him the lesson. One day, Sangara was going to the uh, river Ganges to have his bath and worship. The, the streets of Banaris used to be very, very narrow, narrow lanes. <clears throat> and across the road, there was a dead body. And a lady was sitting next to the body, dead body, weeping. Now, he cannot cross, he cannot walk. So Shangara said, Mother, please move the body to one side. So the lady looked at him, asked the body to move. Now, it must be the husband has passed away. She can't think properly. Can the dead body move? Please move the body. You ask the body to move. Again, the lady said. So it's idea of this that my mind cannot think because too much of sorrow then Sangara had to explain but the body can't move by itself then she asked oh it can't move it doesn't have any shakti it doesn't have any power oh it needs power to move you need shakti to move and she disappeared Sangara learned the lesson without shakti without power divine mother nothing moves in this world that's why he says, if Shiva is united, he will be able to project the universe. Without her, Shiva won't be able to even move his limbs. So, when I said earlier about the weeping for mother, I wanted to tell you the song that, the second song, that, the song that's Devaradi rang, sang 
it says, I'm crying, you, I'm calling you mother and mother, mother. Why don't you open the door? Why don't you look at me? It's such a beautiful song. And as an incident, inter interesting incident connected with that song, Holy Mother was living in Calcutta, in Udbodhan. And <clears throat> one day, one man, one gentleman, um, his name Patma Vinod, as a young boy, as a young man or a young boy, he had come to, he had seen Sri Ramakrishna, he had come to Sri Ramakrishna. But then he got into acting and a part of it, drinking problem, all that. At night, fully drunk, he is walking along the road. And he knew Swami Saradananda. He used to call him my friend. And he came in front of Holy Mother's house. He knew Mother stays there. So he sang this song. And so pathetically, she, he sang, how can you, leaving your child outside, how can you sleep inside? I've been calling you again and again, and you are still not uh, looking at me, lift, lifting your head. Mother could not contain anymore. She got up from her bed, opened the window, and looked out. And he saw that. Oh, mother, you have woken up. Very good. Now, now take my salute, salute, salutations. And he prostrated himself on the road, on the dirty road. Doesn't matter. And then went away singing another song. Oh, my mind. Keep the ma keep mother Shyama within you. Only let me and you know about her. Nobody else. And then he added this extra line, not my friend. That is Swami Sharadananda. That is that's a song. If you really cry for mother, mother will show her face. Because though he was fully drunk, he was crying, he was singing it with so with so much emotion. That mother could not contain herself. The same thing. If you are really crying for mother, mother will show her face. <clears throat> and Divine Mother Durga is Durga Tanasini, the remover of difficulties. To whom can we turn if not to mother when we are in trouble? What do the children do when they are in trouble? They run to mother. <coughs> It may seem a bit opportunistic that we call her when we are in trouble and forget her when we are in, when we are happy. That's what happens with all of us. The same with children. When they are happy, they play with their toys and they are happy. But when something happens, and they are in trouble, they just call mother and run to mother. So we all call that when we are in trouble, we call on mother. This is a known fact. In the Gita, Sri Krishna says, four type of people worship me, call on me. Those who are in distress, those who are seekers of wealth, those who are seekers of knowledge, and the wise. And then he says, they are all noble. Even those who are in uh, calling God because we are in distress, or calling on God just to, for the sake of wealth, Sri Krishna says they are noble. Because they are calling on God. And the thing is, you, for, for whatever reason you call on God, gradually in the long run, real love for God will generate in the heart. That's the reason they say, doesn't matter, they are noble. Even if you are calling on God because of distress or because you need one wealth, it's good. If you look at the people who are praying to God and going to the temple, 99.9% Nine nine percent will be belonging to the first two class. Those who are in distress and those who are seeking wealth. Some distress or other, whatever be it. Those who are seeking knowledge, real knowledge, and those who are wise who pray to God just for the sake of God are very, very, very few. And they all accept that. That's why Krishna says, among thousands of people, perhaps one may seek me. And among such thousands who are seeking, perhaps one may attain me. It's very difficult. But that doesn't mean that 
God considers it mm, selfish or opportunistic? No. As mother, she is bound to help us. Shankarajarya in another hymn says, O Durga, O ocean of mercy, overwhelmed with danger, I call on you. Overwhelmed with danger, I call on you. Think not that I am a cheat, for it is natural that children afflicted with danger and thirst remember their mother. O mother of the universe, there is nothing to be wondered if you should be full of compassion for me, for a mother does not forsake her child, even if it has innumerable faults. A mother does not forsake her child, even if it has innumerable faults. In another verse, he says, Wicked children may be there, but never a wicked mother. Puputro jayeda kujida bi kumata na bhagati. Wicked children may be there. Children may um, forget parents, may ill treat them, but for the mother, the child is always child. Mother is always there to look after. That's why I'll uh, say with a few words of Swami, Swami Vivekananda, he said, Mother is the must, first manifestation of power and is considered a higher idea than father. Sorry, the father's here, you have to accept it. Mother is, is a higher idea than father. In the Veda, the, the Upanishad, it says, Madhru Devo Bhava. Then comes Pitru Devo Bhava. Can look upon mother as God. Then comes, look upon father as God. So mother is first. The name of mother brings the idea of Shakti, divine energy and omnipotence. The baby believes its mother to be all powerful, able to do anything. Sri Ramakrishna says in the gospel, say, there's a maid servant in a rich man's house. Her child is there and the master's child is also there. Both of them are playing. If they have some disagreement, the maid servant's child will say, I'll tell my mother. So mother is all powerful. Whoever is the mother. <clears throat> the baby believes its mother to be all powerful, able to do anything. All merciful, all powerful, omnipresent. These are the attributes of the Divine Mother. She is the sum total of the energy in the universe. Every manifestation of power in the universe is Mother. She is life, she is intelligence, she is love. The worship of even one spark of Mother, Divine Mother, in our earthly Mother leads to great to greatness. Worship her if you want love and wisdom. Worship the Divine Mother if you want love and wisdom. Thank you. We pray for her blessings to all of us, for the whole world. <clears throat> so we'll be inviting you soon to join the nuns in some chanting and a flower offering to Mother Dorga. Um, just a few announcements about what's coming up. We've got the yoga class that's coming Thursday morning from 10 to 11, 15 a.m. Next Friday night, we have the Bhagavad Gita discussion led by Dr. Panaji. We'll be coming person or attend by soon. Next Sunday, we have the Vedanta Book Club meeting, and it'll be like an interactive session uh, led by Dr. Panaji. Also, just keep in mind, on the 3rd of November, Sunday, we'll have the Kali Puja celebration. So I do hope you can join us for that. So now uh, I'll be putting up the verses for chanting, and you can join the nuns. <clears throat> 